The cars arrive at the circuit for practice. There are four Mercedes for Fangio, Kling, Herman and Sterling Moss, who has become the first Englishman since Dick Seaman to drive for the three-pointed star. Fangio chats with President Perron. Mercedes have a new induction system, increasing power to 290 brake horsepower. Hans Herman climbs aboard and Fangio sets off for a few laps. Ferrari have three cars for Trantignon, Farina and Gonzalez, Mike Hawthorne having joined Van Wall for 1955. Lancia have done a great deal of testing since Barcelona, including a full race distance at Monza in December. And they've signed Eugenio Castellotti, seen here between Ascari and Villaresi. Race day and the Argentine Grand Prix has attracted a crowd of more than 250,000, all expecting either Fangio or Gonzalez to win. To world champion Juan Fangio goes the honour of raising the national flag. Then, behind the flags of all the competing drivers, the cars are wheeled onto the starting grid, where there are four different makes on the front row. The Ferrari of Gonzalez has pole position, and beside it are the Lancia of Ascari, the Mercedes of Fangio, and the Maserati of Jean Berra. Fangio makes the best getaway, and Moss makes a great start from row three, to be in fourth place behind Fangio, Ascari, and Gonzalez as they power through the opening lap. Lap three, and Ascari forces the Lancia past Fangio's Mercedes on the inside. Then Berra sends the dust flying. As trying to pass Shell's Maserati, he takes them both out of the race. Together with Berger's Gordini and Monditegi's Maserati. No one is hurt, but Monditegi is not amused. Ascari now has Gonzalez on his tail, with Fangio and Moss lying third and fourth. Villarese's Lancia packs up, so he takes over Castellotti's car, when Eugenio is overcome by the extreme heat, 52 degrees centigrade, 126 degrees Fahrenheit at track level. Alberto extends his lead, but on lap 22, the handling of the Lancia catches him out, and he has to walk home. Gonzalez is driving superbly, but is handicapped by injuries received when he crashed during the tourist trophy in Dundrod. Watched by his president, he stops to let Farina take over his Ferrari. Meanwhile, Fangio leads, and after some Italian operatics, Farina gets away in Gonzalez's car. Moss is suffering from the heat, and his Mercedes is suffering from a fuel vapour lock. They are forced to retire after 29 laps. Five laps later, Fangio stops to cool off in the shade of Alfred Neubauer and have four new wheels fitted to his Mercedes. After a leisurely stop of three minutes, he rejoins the race, which is now led by his compatriot, Roberto Mires, who started his Maserati in 16th place on the grid. Sadly, after two laps of glory, Mires is forced into the pits for some 10 minutes to have a faulty fuel pump repaired. Fangio goes on his winning way, seemingly impervious to the heat, whereas the number one Ferrari has been driven by Gonzalez, Farina, Trantignor, Gonzalez and Farina again, and the number two car by Farina, Malioli, Trantignon and Malioli. After a remarkable three-hour drive, Fangio wins the Argentine Grand Prix for Mercedes. The only other driver to complete the distance unaided is Roberto Mires, who brings his Maserati home in fifth place. All the Lanciers have retired.
the world champion receives an ecstatic welcome from his fans and his 1955 season has got off to the best possible start.